let's uh, go back to a bit more predictable uh, issue, and that's the issue of business at Sona Koyo. Uh, there's uh, been, of course, some negative impact that's played out through auto and series because of the slowdown in the auto sector broadly, and then there were the issues with Maruti. Uh, but we're just touching base with the management of Sona Koyo to understand if things are changing for the better. The stock's up uh, more than 3.5% today. Sanjay Kapoor is Vice Chairman and MD at Sona Koyo, joining us from Delhi. Mr. Kapoor, very good afternoon to you, sir. Thanks so much uh, for taking time to speak with us. I just want to start with the big picture as things stand right now. The last time we spoke with the management, it's been a while. Uh, but, you know, that time things were looking quite dismal from the auto sector perspective. Uh, then came the Maruti issues, which only added to the negative sentiment. As things stand right now, uh, is there any reason to believe that things are turning for the positive or at least are steady? Well, uh, actually, we're going to see a good growth in the last six months of the year. That's what we're forecasting. Uh, yes, we did have uh, a little bit of a um, slowdown when Maruti went into a strike at their Manasar plant, and it did affect one of our lines um, in terms of production. However, we've seen that revived. Uh, they've taken a good decision. They're back in production, and we don't see um, any uh, reason to, to believe why uh, there will be less growth. There will be more growth than we had last year. Uh, this year as well. Uh, so would it be able to uh, quantify the impact that this Maruti sort of agitation has had on uh, you all? Because I think uh, there's about 15% of your sales that come from Manisar. Uh, so, you know, over the strike period, what would you have lost in terms of, uh, you know, potential sales, sir? Yeah, I'd say it's uh, close to 10 crores on the top line, which is 10 crore revenue uh, for the last two months. That's really the impact that we've had uh, on the, from the top line. Uh, perspective. But Maruti is uh, close to 45% of our business and that's purely because Maruti is the market leader uh, today in the Indian um, passenger car space. Uh, so things have uh, restarted, operations have restarted, but apparently they're going to be sort of, you know, ramped up fairly slowly. Uh, so some lingering impact of that would stay, you'd say? You'd say? Well, uh, I would say that by the end of uh, the, the year, the, the last two quarters, uh, they'd be back to what they were last year at least. That's what we're uh, projecting and that's what we're hoping for. So yes, there will be, you know, a staggered uh, increase as uh, the market, uh, you know, as they come back into production. However, we should see them come back to normal and back to their volumes by the, in the last six months of the year. So apart from that Maruti factor, uh, just give us a bit more color on what you're picking up from your clients in the auto sector. Uh, you know, again, has the slide sort of stemmed now? Are we maybe stabilizing but stabilizing at lower levels? Uh, or are you anticipating or seeing any sort of a potential for a pickup as well? Well, you know, Mahindra has had good growth and uh, they continue to have good growth, uh, which is uh, definitely positive. Um, the automotive industry is looking at a 7 to 9% growth. I am hoping that uh, by next month, we'll see better growth. There's talk of interest rates coming down. However, that hasn't happened uh, right now, but there is talk of that. Uh, there is talk of better sentiments in the market as we approach the festive season. So we definitely see uh, potential for uh, better growth uh, you know, over the next few, next couple of quarters. And we hope to see the kind of uh, growth that has been projected in the automotive uh, OEM space. So what should you uh, now be targeting your uh, sort of full year growth numbers at? Has it changed from your previous uh, sort of guidance? Uh, well, you know, we'll have uh, s some amount of growth. Uh, we will have uh, growth in the top line, our, our bottom line, our EBITDA margins will be as per what we've projected. We've got a lot of programs in place in terms of raw material uh, decrease, in terms of localization, etc. So we'll maintain our uh, EBITDA margins. What are some of these programs? Uh, if you, could you just help us understand the impact and uh, how they're played uh, out? Just to, well, just to give you an example, we've actually set up um, an insourcing uh, uh, initiative which is bringing back a lot of the uh, products that we had outsourced earlier on. So that will definitely add to our uh, you know, profitability in terms of material cost reduction. We've been able to reduce our material cost from 80.1% you know, in 2008 to close to 70% today. So we've had a drastic reduction through our localization programs. These localization programs continue uh, so that we you know, build more in India as opposed to buying because of foreign exchange fluctuation, et cetera. These things can affect uh, you know, component manufacturers. So with localization and insourcing, which is you know, bringing into the company what we were outsourcing earlier to suppliers, this definitely gives us an advantage in terms of raw material uh, price. So that benefit plays out through this year or even perhaps, uh, you know, then beyond that? Yes, definitely. That benefit will show up at, uh, you know, at the raw material uh, level uh, and will definitely have a 
positive impact on our uh, operating profits. Uh, so just, uh, one specific question, there was some talk that you're likely to sell a large uh, bit of land in Gurgaon, 13 odd acres is what we've seen, uh, to try and pay down a bit of debt. Uh, anything you can give us that, sir? Okay, so what we're doing is we're looking at manufacturing optimization and uh, realizing, realization. And what, what's happened is over the last 26 years, we've grown uh, so fast as the automotive industry has. We uh, need to relook at relaying our lines, etc., and optimizing our manufacturing processes so that we can you know, bring down cycle times, what we call cycle times in manufacturing, and therefore you know, increase capacity. For that reason, we're relocating a lot of our lines uh, from the Gurgaon plant, which is our first facility that we started our business in. And once we do this by the end of uh, or the middle of 2014 calendar year, we should be able to free up this land. At that point, we have the option to sell this land and uh, you know, uh, repay our debts, which is something that we would definitely look at. Uh, our, most of our debt today has got a lot to do with uh, you know, relocation, and therefore the debt is, uh, or, or the investments we've made is to relocate lines so that we are, uh, create a more efficient uh, production system. All right, fair enough. Uh, so that's a slightly longer-term process. Thanks so much, Mr. Kapoor. Appreciate you taking the time to speak with us, uh, just giving us a sense of how business Thank is you. shaping up. That's all a quick. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for Retina display, full screen view, faster response time, and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.